Hi guys. So I've had a couple of people ask me recently for my sock formula and they wanted to know how I make my socks because um, if you follow me on Instagram, you know I make a lot of socks. I probably, I mean I knit at least a five or six pair a year in, amongst all the other knitting that I do because they are small, I can take them in my bag and there's just something I really like about knitting socks. Uh, a couple of years ago, one year I knit socks for nearly all my nieces and nephews. I might have done them for all but two that we were pretty sure wouldn't like wool socks um, because of sensory issues. So I knit, I knit socks for that year. I knit like probably 15 pairs of socks in a year. Um, and at that time I was still doing cuff down socks. I have since sworn off cuff down socks. I probably don't ever want to make I say that. I don't usually want to make another pair of cuff down socks. I did make one pair this year. I made a pair of, of socks that were made to look like Max's socks in, or Max's pajama bottoms, I guess they kind of are, his footy pajamas, in Where the Wild Things Are for the little boy that I nanny who absolutely loves that book. So, um, those I did cuff down because in order to do the pointy toes. But normally I am a toe up sock girl. I have tried many, 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 many cast ons. I have since concluded that, um, was it Judy's magic cast on? Judy's magic cast on is the way to go. I've tried all the others. I really like the way it looks. I like how seamless it is. I like how smooth it is. But Judy's magic cast on is the way that I do all of the toes to all of my socks now. Um, from there, I go up to the heel, the heels, I do the short row with the wraps. I know a lot of people do the short row without the wraps. Um, people have many different ways of doing heels. I've tried a few. I like the short row with the wraps. I like the extra cushion that the wraps give on the heels. Um, I have foot problems uh, because of working retail on cement floors for too many years. And I like having that little extra cushion there. Uh, and then up the cuff to, I should use a, I should use a pair that's not black for this. Up the cuff to the bind off is Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off. Um, I think it's Nitty actually, the first, that first published that one. And uh, there's an article, a link that basically says Judy's magic cast on and Jenny's, uh, Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off are a match made in heaven. And I have to agree. I've tried many other options. Those are the ones that I like. So that's my basic pattern um, for the in-between. Of course, like the bottom is always a stock net because you want that to be smooth, but this is where it gets fun. I have done any number of things to the tops and to the cuffs because the opportunities are endless. You can do anything on those parts. But, um, this black pair right here is my, these are my spider socks, which probably have some cat hair on them. Ignore the cat hair. You see the big spider there. So these were a pattern I, that was floating around Ravelry and Pinterest. I fell in love with them. I had this black, I think it's this brown sheep company yarn that I had ordered on eBay. I had just started doing toe up socks at that point and I really didn't want to do them cuffed down because I had ordered the yarn on eBay. I only had the two little skeins of it. I was pretty sure I had enough, but when you're getting into cable knitting, it can use so much yarn that I was nervous about that. So I didn't want to risk getting all the way to the toe on perfectly black socks and discovering that I didn't have what I needed to finish. So I, I could have probably just taken the pattern and reversed the cuff and the, and the um, top of the foot here, but I knit so often around small children or in social environments where there's chaos and talking that I didn't want to risk losing my place. So I actually went through and retyped the entire pattern from the bottom up so that I had the big spider at the top and the three little spiders at the bottom, exactly like the original pattern, but I could do the cuff, I mean, I could do the toe and heel where I needed and follow the pattern from the bottom up instead of from the top down. I actually got the Barbara Walker book that this big spider comes from. I got the book 
so that I could copy just that spider um, from the book because it was a little bit easier than following the pattern. I then copy, this is my, just like my cable knitting, I copied and pasted that whole pattern into a notepad on my MacBook, which communicates with my iPhone and my iPad so that I can just delete it line by line as I knit. And I knit these one line at a time at the same time. Did it on this sock, then I did it on this sock, then I switched back to this sock, switched back to this sock. I know a lot of people really like the magic loop method. I really don't. Um, I've tried it a couple of times. There's something about having them both in my hands. It's too, too busy and I get just caught up and confused and I don't know, there's just something about the magic loop method that just doesn't work for me. Um, so this pair here, which I had started last time I did a video, I just finished the other night. Um, these are the turtle socks that I did for my wife, which I haven't even given to her yet because I wanted to make this video. So as you can see, there is the turtle. The turtle comes, I believe, out of that same Barbara Walker book, um, Charted Knitting Designs. And then the top and the cuff, I just did the rest of it in a 3-4 ribbing. So this is, the, this is why when people say to me, like when I show these on my Facebook and on my Instagram, I had people messaging me or posting on the thing, what's the pattern for these? What's the pattern for these? Well, there's no pattern for these. I can give you the pattern for the turtle or I can tell you which book to find it in, but I can't really give you a pattern for these because I just kind of threw the turtle onto the cuff of the sock because sock patterns are basically a blank, blank landscape and you can do whatever you want with them. Um, this is the pair that I had. <laughs> okay, so last time I made a video, I said the next pair I did was gonna be the Lorna's Laces, but then I realized we were going into Pride Month. I had this Malabrago yarn. Malab I don't know if I'm saying that right. I had this yarn, the Malab, whatever it is. Um, in this rainbow colors. And I really wanted to do something for Pride. These will not be done by Pride. Pride is the day after tomorrow um, for my town. But these are gonna be my love is love socks. I've started a heart cable heart pattern that I'm gonna put up the top of the foot and then around up the ankle, up the cuff. Um, that heart cable heart pattern I found on Pinterest. Just a little tip I have when knitting socks. If you are like me and you like to do it on DPNs, um, I saw these really cute little DPN cases on Knit Spin Quilt. I believe it was Knit Spin Quilt um, on Knit Spin Quilt on Etsy, and I totally plan to get a set because they're really cute and I love them. But in the meantime, until I get those, I just have a rubber band, or it's actually a hair elastic from like the dollar store, um, and I just put the hair elastic around the ends of the needles, one on each end, so that I can throw them in my bag. I don't have to worry about the needles falling out. So even though I don't do the magic loop method, I do my socks side by side. So I'll do the toe on one, I'll do the toe on the other, then I'll do the uh, most of the foot on one, most of the foot on the other. I do the heels at the same time. Because if I start to do those short row heels and I forget how many I did, or how, what I brought my count down to, or I do, um, there's a couple little tricks to make it so you don't get a heel. I mean, so you don't get a hole right here on the heel. If I forget which trick I used on one sock, I know I can, like if I do them side by side, I can just I can just make sure they're perfectly matched. I don't like my socks to not match. I'm particularly picky about that. And then my last sock thing is actually just in general a book. Um, this is 400 Knitting Stitches by Potter Craft. This is my knitting Bible. I It has everything in it. It has everything from your basic stockinette to super elaborate Celtic knit designs. I'm sure everybody has seen this book, but if you haven't, this is the book to go for. Um, it's just an amazing little reference book to have around if you were just trying to figure out what pattern to use. This That vest that I showed you in my last video that I'm working on for my wife, this is where I got the Celtic knot work that I'm using in that. The cable knitting, um, everything I knit. I end up referencing this at least once. It's an amazing book. Uh, and so once you have that basic sock pattern, once you go from that Judy's Magic cast on, you know where the gusset is, you know where the cuff is, you know where the heel is, learn all those parts of the socks. Once you've learned all those parts of the socks and you've got this book and you've got Pinterest and you've got Ravelry, anything you do on the rest of the sock is up to you. I don't think I've ever actually followed a pattern precisely and used the yarn that they suggested in the pattern and all that. That's just not me. Uh, but I do 
mix and match my patterns. I do read patterns and collect patterns obsessively in order to then create the patterns I actually want. I, you know, I have like a uh, Audible subscription, so it came up with what do you want to listen to? And I was like, well, I really want something about knitting. And I remembered that Christy Last Knits had talked about this book. The book is The Yarn Whisperer by Clara Parks. So I've known the name Clara Parks for a really long time. I've seen some stuff with her around. Obviously there's books of her, Knitlandia and all those everywhere. I didn't realize until I listened to it that she's actually from the same state and lives very close to where I'm sitting right now. Uh, so I started listening to this audiobook. She She's the one who reads it, which is always better. I always like it when an audiobook is read by the author. Um, and essentially it's a memoir where she has taken bits of her knitting life and demonstrated how they compare to her the rest of her life, uh, which I find really fascinating. Like looking at the ways that, um, one of the things that just sticks in my mind is one chapter she talks about baubles and she's talking about um, skin abnormalities and, and um, skin tabs and um, just kind of comparing those little baubles that we put on our knitting and then how that compares to like how we see ourselves and how we see our own physical selves and what I know self-love and all of that and then in another part she's talking about like the nice even stitches of the stockinette and how on the reverse side you've got the pearl stitches the reverse stockinette and what that can symbolize for our lives and um, those scary moments in life that's like taking out a steak and when you go to cut a steak, how terrifying that is. I can only imagine. I have yet to brave a steak. I'm sure I will one day. And so she talks about how terrifying that, that moment of cutting out the steak is and how, what in our in our in the rest of our lives we can compare to the lessons we learn from braving a steak. And I just found it really fascinating. It was a really interesting audiobook. Um, and really cool to be listening and be like, oh, I know what she's talking about, like, because it's from right here in Portland, Maine. Um, because so much of her life revolves around location. Check out that book. It's a really awesome audio book. I highly suggest it. She's fantastic. And let me know what you come up with for your most fun sock patterns. I'd love to see what you guys are doing. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. Find me on Instagram. Find me on Facebook. Find me on Ravelry. I am K Ray Solace everywhere. Uh, except for Etsy where I'm Cat and Kay's Crafts. And I'll put all that in the links along with links to everything I've talked about here, and I look forward to talking to you guys soon. Bye.